Welcome to your favourite teacher. Today we'll be looking at structure and bonding of carbon. Carbon is in group 4 and has 4 electrons in its outer shell. It forms 4 bonds for every atom it shares to make 4 shared pairs of electrons, giving it 8 in its outer shell, making it complete. You need to know about four different ways in which carbon atoms can bond with other carbon atoms forming different structures. The first is diamond. Each carbon atom in a diamond structure forms four covalent bonds with four other atoms in a tetrahedral shape. This creates a giant structure as the bonding involves many carbon atoms and can go on and on. This makes diamond a very hard structure. As the covalent bonds are very strong, there are many covalent bonds in diamonds, the melting and boiling point is very high as more energy is needed to break the strong covalent bonds. As there are no charges caused by free or delocalised electrons, diamond is a poor conductor of electricity. The second is graphite. Each carbon atom in graphite forms three covalent bonds with three other carbon atoms. These covalently bonded carbon atoms are arranged in layers to form hexagonal rings. This makes graphite soft and the layers of the rings can slide over each other, making graphite a useful lubricant. There is no covalent bond between the layers and the electron in the fourth outer shell is delocalised and moves freely through the structure. The delocalised electrons allow graphite to conduct electricity in a similar way to a metallic structure. The third, graphene. Graphene is one layer of the graphite structure, just one carbon atom thick. Graphene has delocalised electrons making it a very good conductor. It has three strong covalent bonds per carbon atom, causing it to have a high melting and boiling point due to the high number of strong bonds. Graphene is one atom thick, but the high number of covalent bonds makes it very strong. These properties make graphene very useful in electronics as it can replace silicon in manufacturing and can be used to make composites. The last is fullerenes. Fullerenes are molecules made of carbon atoms arranged in hexagonal rings. These rings connect with three covalent bonds. These bonds have varying shapes and form hollow structures. Fullerenes may also contain rings with five or seven carbons. Are we ready for this one? Buckminster fullerene, or buckyball, is a spherical molecule with the molecular formula C60 and there are weak intermolecular forces between individual buckyballs holding them together. It has a low melting and boiling point as less energy is required to overcome the weak intermolecular forces. The round shape of the molecules makes the material very slippery. Nanotubes are formed from graphene sheets and they roll into a cylinder shape. They have a hollow center and can be very long and therefore have a high length to diameter ratio. They're used in electronics, nanotechnology and manufacturing materials with distinct properties. So to summarize, carbon can form covalent bonds in lots of different ways. Diamond has four covalent bonds and therefore is hard and has high melting and boiling points, but doesn't conduct electricity. Graphite forms three covalent bonds and has delocalized electrons moving between its layers, therefore can conduct electricity and makes it soft with a high melting and boiling point. Graphene is a single layer of graphite and can be used in electronics to make composites. There are two fullerenes, Buckminster fullerene, which is spherical and slippery, and nanotubes, which have high length to diameter ratio. I'm Miss Meeks, and we've been looking at the structure and bonding of carbon with your favourite teacher.